Chris, I love that you asked me what I'm experiencing here because it might be kind of ironic to smile during hurricane coverage. But what I feel in this community is the sense of community. There are people riding on bikes back and forth. I'm actually looking at a gentleman to my right who will not allow me to put him on camera, but he is literally helping the woman who lives here get stuff from one side of the road into her house and he's carrying it on his bike. There is an incredible sense of, of love and community and rebuilding, of course, after what we've seen here. This is my first time in River Park here in Collier County, and I have to tell you, it's been an incredible experience. Now, the reality of it is, of course, is that a lot of this neighborhood looks just like this. For so many communities throughout Southwest Florida, this is a very familiar image. As you can see, a lot of these homes have been gutted. I spoke to some people in the community who told me they had four feet of water inside of their home. I actually spoke to one gentleman who told me, and you might have heard him a little earlier in our newscast throughout the day, talk about how he had to help his mom get through floodwaters and he was worried because she can't swim and that floodwater actually came up to his waist. Luckily, they were able to get to the parking garage just down the street at Coastland Mall, but these are the type of stories I'm hearing from this predominantly and historically black community here in Collier County of a community that says, yes, we've been impacted by Hurricane Ian, but we are working together to build our community back. Of course, there are remnants of what we've seen throughout Southwest Florida furniture. Uh, again, this stepladder reiterating what you're feeling so much of here in River Park, which is hope and inspiration. Now, there is a message from this community that we are going to share with you a little later, later in our newscast. I spoke to one person who's working very hard to bring awareness to what has happened to this community. It truly has been devastated. I have learned that there are so many people here who are displaced, living in uh, shelters, living with hmm. friends and family, uh, not sure what the next steps look like. And we are working to bring those stories to you. But again, the message here is one of them is that we are going to rebuild and keep building. But also they do have... Uh, um, uh, different resources that they need here as well. Uh, and Shari, seeing the stepladder really is inspirational. So many stories are inspiring us and hearing the neighbors helping each other. What resources can we do as their goal is to bring awareness to the River Park community? I appreciate you asking that question, right? Because literally to my left, there was a two women that came a little earlier and said, do you know what this community needs? And they started speaking with uh, the young man who's been representing this community, Tyrone, and he started lifting, uh, lifting off some items and they literally just came back hours later to help. But I also spoke with the Collier County president of the Collier NAACP here, and he tells me the need here is for voluntary medical services and voluntary mental health services. So if you're able to help with that, he says FEMA's been out here, the American Red Cross. They've received a lot of resources and help from neighbors in the community, but they also need that type of assistance as well. And he asked that you reach out to him if you'd like to help, as he is a big part of leading the charge when it comes to helping this community rebuild. Live in River Park in Collier County, Shari Armstrong, Fox 4.